Two common problems in MMORPGs, and in particular Final Fantasy XIV, is one, to make a lot of classes or jobs that each feel unique, and two, to make sure all of these options are actually viable in a game with such broadly different gameplay scenarios. In this video, I will be looking at a few job examples, namely Warrior, Paladin and Machinist. Yes, incidentally, these three jobs have in recent memory been discussed a lot in relation to their viability in Savage Raiding specifically. I will showcase examples of how the jobs are good and bad and why that is. Some comparisons to other jobs may occur, but the main point of this video is to try and explain why these jobs seem to sort of fall flat when it comes to, say, Savage Raiding, even though they work perfectly fine. In fact, to some degree, they are the masters of their craft in certain other fields. Now, before we dive in, let me just start by saying that I will probably suggest some exaggerated measures to fix the jobs in question, and the likely scenario is that that much is not necessary to make jobs good. Now then, let's start with looking at Warrior, which, in addition to being known for inner release of course, is known to have some of the most powerful defensive tools in the game. The shortest cooldown death immunity in Home Gang, possibly the strongest standalone raid cooldown among the tanks with Shake It Off, and of course, Bloodwetting and Nascent Flash. In content without a time limit or where the time limit is irrelevant, the warrior tends to be the de facto best tank because it is so incredibly sturdy that it hardly needs a healer of its own. Which is especially true in dungeons due to the way bloodwetting scales with the number of targets. As a bonus, Warrior also has possibly one of the simplest attack rotations in the game. Not that many OGCDs and not really a very rigid rotation, rather depending on a somewhat simple priority system instead. Not to mention that the sheer amount of guaranteed critical direct hits the Warrior gets makes its DPS in any context extremely consistent. However, all these advantages come at a cost. Namely, in terms of DPS, in a single target boss fight like in a Savage Raid, Warrior tends to reliably always be at the rock bottom of the four tanks. Granted, the difference between the average performance of a Warrior and a Gunbreaker, who tends to reside in the top, is in reality only a few percent in difference. Seriously, it's like 3 or 4 percent. Now, the reason why it is a problem that Warrior's damage is lower than the other tanks is mainly because in a Savage Raid setting, the compensation, namely the absolutely bonkers defensive cooldowns that Warrior brings, do not actually matter. Rarely, if ever, will you need a death immunity every 4 minutes, and if you do, you have two tanks. And I can't imagine you will ever need a death immunity even more often than that. If you don't benefit from home gang having a shorter cooldown, then all of the other death immunities actually are better because they have other benefits. Automatic self-healing and varying styles of actual damage immunity. Bloodwedding's absurd self-healing is also stifled significantly by the lack of many targets to abuse it on. And since you have two tanks, stacking both tanks' defensives on one tank buster usually means that Bloodwedding isn't even anything special. And with two tanks, two healers and four DPS, at least one of which will be a ranged physical, you have so many raid-wide defensives that Shake It Off isn't anything special either. This ultimately leads to the only real unique benefit the warrior brings to the table being its extremely reliable, but lower, DPS potential. To make warrior more attractive to a savage raid team, there are a couple ways you could go about it. Regularly add more targets so bloodwetting gets more useful. Add even more auto attack damage to bosses such that bloodwetting's large healing is helpful. Add a lot more mechanics that are most easily dealt with, with death immunities. Or make Warrior's DPS potential even higher. Now, the easiest one to make sure more Warriors get Savage Rage spots would be the death immunity thing. But if you require enough death immunities that Warrior becomes necessary, then you simultaneously also make all other tanks no longer viable at all. This issue that the easiest solution to making a genuinely good job also be good in savage raids is a solution that invalidates all the competing jobs in the same field will be something that repeats throughout this video.
Obviously, boosting the potential DPS of an otherwise quote-unquote unviable job is always a way to make it more viable, but this also makes their position in other content where they were already perfectly viable even more dominant, which is also not a good thing. The main issue that Warrior is essentially facing is that its DPS is being taxed to pay for defensive tools that an optimized Savage Raid team does not actually care about. The dangerous solution is to just not tax them for it, but then Warrior becomes dominant since it has both the best defensives and the damage. Why choose Gunbreaker or Dark Knight if Warrior is both tankier and does the same damage? Let's move on to the second example. Paladin, who actually has a lot of similar problems to the warrior. Paladin has the strongest death immunity in the game, Hallowed Ground, the single best raid-wide damage reduction in the game in Passage of Arms, not to mention access to the best and most reliable healing amongst the tanks in Clemency. Paladins also even have the ability to perform a third of their rotation without even being in melee range. Now, you may already have realized that three of these benefits come each at a massive cost, and one of them, while extremely convenient, is not something the Paladin can actually control when it happens, so the benefit falls a bit flat. Hallowed Ground is the strongest death immunity, yes, but death immunities almost always are used in situations where there is plenty of time for the healers to heal you back up after the fact. If there wasn't, then the other death immunities would be invalidated. The steep cost of Hallowed Ground is that it has the longest cooldown amongst these types of actions. And while Warrior's Holmgang is on an excessively short cooldown, Hallowed Ground is instead on a prohibitively long cooldown. Passage of Arms similarly has a prohibitively steep cost, in that you cannot attack or move while using it. So unless you need it for some attack where you have no attack targets anyway, it is objectively a DPS loss to even use it. And the only way to make this ability useful outside of these specific circumstances is to let bosses have so powerful raid-wide attacks that you need that 15% damage reduction to even survive it. But since you have a full raid team, making such heavy hitting attacks would not only restrict your options in tanks, you would be required to bring a paladin, but also your options for the raid team as a whole could be impacted. In a similar vein, while Clemency is incredibly powerful, you are using it INSTEAD of attacking. And if you choose to use it too much, it will even impact your biggest burst damage in your rotation. So even if Paladin has such incredible a utility as a reliable healing tool, it does not matter, because it comes at a too big DPS loss. If Clemency, say, added some sort of potency bonus to your next attack if it successfully did healing to a target, then that could actually make Clemency viable in its current incarnation. Finally, Paladin, uniquely among the tanks, actually has a 20 second long fully ranged attack sequence in its magic burst. This sounds incredibly convenient, but if this was a tool that was actually important to a tank in Savage Raids, it would again, invalidate the other three tanks due to their lack of such an option. Paladin essentially suffers from a combination of having utilities that are not appreciated, as well as having tools that do things too well, which then comes at a steep cost that a Savage Raid team might be unwilling to pay. Granted, Paladin also brings other things to the table, after all, it uniquely can also block attacks. But the fact is that just like Warrior, Paladin is just ever so slightly weaker than Gunbreaker and Dark Knight by a very small margin in terms of DPS. Why would you pay extra DPS for a side dish bonus that you don't want or need? And speaking of paying for something that you don't need, let's talk about the last job, Machinist. Due to the style of toolkit the Machinist has, it is commonly viewed as the ranged physical incarnation of the selfish DPS archetype, meaning that in a Savage Raid team, the Machinist openly competes for the quote-unquote same seat as the Black Mage and Samurai. This is a massive problem, since the jobs that also compete for Machinist's seat in a Raid team, the other ranged physical jobs Bard and Dancer, are actually extremely helpful for Black Mage and Samurai. Granted, there's nothing preventing you from bringing two ranged physical, but these could just as well be both Bard and Dancer too, 
Essentially, in your average raid team, the machinist is much less likely to be able to expect a bard or dancer in their team than a black mage or a samurai is. The only thing Machinist brings to the table in utility that neither Black Mage or Samurai brings is an extra raid-wide defensive, which can be helpful if you need it more than just the one from another ranged physical. Otherwise, it is simply the ranged physical defensive cooldown you expect the average raid team to already have. Meanwhile, Samurai in particular also have both Bloodbath and Third Eye. Now, Samurai and Black Mage both bring significantly more damage to the table than a machine is, somewhere between 4 and 10%, depending on where you compare on the chart. That doesn't sound like much, and since you could simply bring a ninja instead of the Samurai, for example, it isn't like you're losing that much DPS. The problem is that the Machinist performs worse than all of its peers, both the selfish DPS side and the ranged physical side. And specifically the ranged physical jobs benefit from the presence of stronger DPS like Black Mage and Samurai due to their raid buffs boosting them too. Additionally, in an optimized raid team, typically the strongest DPS is handed gear first since they can produce the largest DPS gain for the team. What this means is that even if you were to choose a machinist as your so-called selfish DPS, then your ninja or monk would probably be given the gear instead anyway, which sort of defeats the purpose. Which leads us to finally talk about why Machinist simply has to be weaker than Samurai and Black Mage, on paper anyway. Samurai is a melee job, which we can consider the default setting. Samurai literally is the job that brings the least to the table for a raid team, only damage. Black Mage is a ranged job, and having the ability to perform your rotation at range is considered a utility, and utilities cost DPS. So, the Black Mage's potential is lower than the Samurai's for balance reasons. The reasoning is that a ranged DPS would be able to continue its rotation unimpeded when a melee has to move out of attacks. You could also argue that Black Mage has the downside of needing to stand still to attack, but Black Mage these days actually has access to a lot of mobility options and tools to deal with temporary movement like with Aetherial Manipulation and Triple Cast. So aside from dealing with temporary unwillingness to move in ley lines, I don't think Black Mage's immobility should be seen as payment for the ranged utility. Now, Machinist is also a ranged DPS. In fact, it can move constantly while attacking. So, the only thing that can stop the Machinist from doing its full DPS is either if there is nothing to attack, or the Machinist dies. So, we have melee DPS that can be inconvenienced somewhat easily by boss mechanics. Range DPS that can be inconvenienced by boss mechanics if it exceeds the amount of tools the job has to deal with it. And then we have range DPS that stops for nothing. In a vacuum, it makes sense that Machinist should do significantly less DPS than Black Mage and Samurai, and that Black Mage should do less than Samurai. It makes sense, you are getting a utility that makes your job easier in some way. And the problem is that in modern raid settings, most mechanics tend to either respect the melee DPS so much that they can deal entirely with all mechanics necessary without ever moving out of attack range of the boss or the boss actually becomes untargetable when this is not the case. So the downside of being melee is almost completely null and void, since the boss fights are designed to accommodate a certain number of melee DPS. Similarly, rarely, if ever, does a boss fight call for so many movement mechanics that a black mage, played well, completely dries out on attacks to use while moving. So the machinist being able to do its entire rotation while moving is sort of insignificant, since the black mage is capable of performing its entire rotation without stopping it. Now, this finally leads us to addressing the elephant in the room. Why can't we just abolish the ranged tax? Why does black mage and machinist have to be weaker than samurai just because they are ranged? Why does machinist have to be weaker than black mage because it can move more easily? Well, let's say that Machinist, Black Mage and Samurai all did the same amount of DPS. In an optimal scenario, why would you ever pick a Samurai or Black Mage over a Machinist? 
The machinist can move more easily than both of them, and it is not like Black Mage or Samurai brings anything else to the table, right? In other words, even if Samurai is stronger than Black Mage, there are still situations where a Black Mage would be superior. And technically, there are situations where a machinist would be superior too. They just don't happen much in Savage Raiding, as that much necessary movement would not only cause problems for Black Mages, it would also cause issues for healers, Red Mages, in some capacity summoners, and potentially all melee DPS, as well as tanks. Machinist is incredible in Palace of the Dead and Heaven on High, its burst damage is absurd. However, that is completely irrelevant in a long-term fight. Its ability to run and gun, or kite, in deep dungeons is not applicable in a savage raid. Now, I am not saying that Machinist being as low on the charts as it is is justified, not at all. In fact, I believe Machinist could really use a helping hand. The issue is that the balance team needs to be very careful when buffing it, because if it becomes too strong, it overshadows a lot of jobs. Because, while its mobility and utility is not particularly important, it is better to have than not have. My best suggestion to fix Machinist would be to take some of its utility away. In PvP, Bard and Machinist can only move at about walking speed while using their spammable attacks. What if Machinist moved slower in PvE while performing their 1-2-3 combo? They could even add a cooldown that lets them temporarily run while doing so to deal with mechanics when needed, like a different take on triple cast. This would leave more room to let Machinist be a bit stronger. That was a bit of a rambly discussion, but the general conclusion that I'm trying to make is this. The reason why a job that is good is bad in certain content is mainly because its utility budget has been spent on things that don't matter in that content. In other words, you paid DPS potential for mobility or defensive tools that no one asked for. An additional conclusion is also that if all jobs somehow were equally good DPS-wise, then we would instead be faced with a massive utility imbalance that would still favor some jobs over others. It is an endless battle. That is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this discussion interesting, please consider leaving a like. You can also subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when next I post a video. And if you have any questions or anything to add, I am open to hear your opinions on the subject, then please leave a comment. Fun fact, Astrologian and Scholar also beat White Mage and Sage by about 6%, relatively speaking. Which is actually a bigger difference than Warrior and Paladin have to Gunbreaker and Dark Knight. Yet, I have not heard anyone say a word about that being an issue. Strange.